welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. So I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm Chris Shea, your host, and it's uh, my pleasure to be joined um, today by my guest, and uh, it's um, Tony Jacobson, who has uh, written uh, the book, Disable Your Disability. And uh, on this podcast, we talk a lot about uh, mindfulness and trying to find peace in our life. And um, while we do that, we look at practical solutions for finding that peace. And I know that there's a lot of people who uh, don't have peace in their life or are having difficulty finding that peace uh, due to uh, chronic medical issues. And that's one of the things that's really inspired me about uh, your book, Tony, and, you know, about what you do. Um, So on that note, if you can kind of tell us a bit about yourself and uh, we're going to take it from there. All right. Well, hello, Chris and everybody. Thank you for having me on the podcast today. I really appreciate it. Uh, As Chris said, my name is Tony Jacobson, and I'm the author of Disable Your Disability, Live the Healthy Life You Deserve. My brand new book just came out. And, um, you know, uh, pretty much my story is I I have a physical disability. Let's start with that. Uh, I was born with a rare bone disorder called osteogenesis imperfecta, which Mm -hmm. in uh, simple terms is brittle bones. And uh, I have type 1, which is the one of the milder forms of osteogenesis imperfecta or OI as we like to refer to it. Okay. So I was born with this disability and <clears throat> because of the disability I've throughout my lifetime, I've broken about 70 different times, uh, various bones throughout my body. Mm. Uh, I've had about 12 surgical procedures. I have steel rods that are placed in both of my femurs and both of my tibias. Uh, I've had those since I was a kid and, and still got them to this day. Uh, let's see what else. I've um, but broken bones, uh, surgical procedures, and pretty much because of that, because I was really breaking my bones when I was, uh, mostly when I was younger, I, I used a wheelchair when I was a kid. And, you know, throughout my childhood, I used a wheelchair. I, you know, would barely get up onto my feet. And uh, later on throughout the years, uh, I got a little stronger. And in my teenage years, I was able to get out of the wheelchair and start using crutches. Mm -hmm. So that was a a big, big milestone for me. And then uh, when I was 24, I actually, so I used the crutches from kind of my late teens to my early 20s. And then when I was 24 years old, I had a final surgical procedure that uh, replaced a rod that I had in one of my, in, in my femur. And it actually gave me the possibility of actually walking. So I took my first unassisted steps for the first time when I was 24 years old. Whoa. So yeah, it was, um, that's when I, (laughs) that's when I officially started to walk and learned how to walk. It was, it was an amazing time and it was really, you know, it was surreal for me just as far as dealing with my disability at that time. And uh, unfortunately though, even though I did, have that milestone and have that breakthrough throughout my early years, you know, I really grew accustomed to being careful and just Mm -hmm. making sure that I didn't break anything. So when I started walking and I really didn't have anything to protect me, say it was the crutches or the wheelchair, it really turned into me not wanting to do anything physical. So it, it stopped me. And, you know, for the next 20 years after that, I didn't do anything physical. And it really was, um, you know, my health just went downhill. Mm. It was, you know, it exponentially got worse through my 30s. Like my late 20s were, were one thing. And then my 30s, it just got worse. And it was all because, you know, things that I was dealing with my, with my disability mm. that I didn't even realize. So when I got closer to my 40s, I 
was, you know, tell myself, like a lot of people who even don't have a disability, tell themselves, okay, you know what, this is it, this is the year, I'm going to be 40, I got to get in shape, I got to get healthier, and, you know, I went through a lot of stuff during, like, 38, 39, and then 40 came and went, and then, like, the next couple years after that was really trying for me because my health got worse and worse, I gained about 40 pounds over that time, uh, you know, throughout those 20 years, uh, I was really overweight. I was having a lot of medical issues on top of the disability, uh, you know, other than the disability. Mm-hmm. So it all came to a head when, you know, right after, let's see, my 42nd birthday, I think it was, or at the beginning of that year, um, I went to the doctor because I was having stomach pains. Like, you know, I was having heartburn all the time and having major issues with my stomach. So I went to the doctor. He, you know, ran a bunch of tests and he even did an EKG on me to test my heart. Mm -hmm. And this is where the story gets juicy because it came back and he told me that it looks that it looked like I might've had a small heart attack. Whoa. And you didn't even know that. And I didn't even know it. Like I really was this like just threw me for a loop. Mm -hmm. So at this point it was not only just dealing, you know, as a 42 year old getting this news that I may have had a, had a small heart attack, which is, you know, uh, which is bad for anybody. Mm -hmm. Then put on top of that, that I have brittle bone disease and a, and a, you know, fragile bone disorder. And this was it. This was like, I, I didn't know what to do. So that's where my life had to turn around. And that's where I kind of really started to say, and I had to, I had to do it quickly because I didn't want to die. I didn't want to die young. So it was very much so after that, that happened that I needed to change my life. And that's when, you know, kind of everything started to change for me. And that, uh, like I said, later that year, when it came right after my birthday, um, that's when I really like took control and changed my life mentally and mm-hmm. emotionally so that I could work on the physical side. And so I hired a personal trainer and I started working out and like that was, I had little tiny pieces of trying to work out throughout my life. Mm-hmm. I was always dealing with, you know, being careful But this time around, I knew that there was no turning back and I had to give it my all. So I really went in big and uh, I mean, uh, my whole transformation happened in about eight months time. Whoa. Yeah, it was going in big. (laughs) (laughs) It was it was pretty incredible. I started really, you know, I was losing weight and not even losing weight. I was getting stronger and Mm -hmm. I started to do things physically that I never thought would have been possible. Uh, that, you know, nobody would would have thought possible for me. And, um, you know, I tell the story in the book, I I tell the story to everybody. This is when it really changed for me because I really started to do things that I never thought would have been possible. And, um, you know, within eight months, I I dropped 40 pounds. I got stronger. I was doing plyo push-ups. And one of the biggest things and one of the biggest goals that I had going into it was that I wanted to run and jump. So I ended up jumping actually getting both my feet up off the ground and jumping uh-huh. onto a, a, a 16 inch plyo box doing box jumps, right? Something that I'd never experienced in my life. Like not a, just let alone walking, mm-hmm. like getting both my feet up off the ground and jumping. Totally now, now having, jumping. having the, this, you know, disease, I mean, is that something that early on the doctor said there was no way that would ever happen? You know, what was this? almost miraculous in, in that sense that, you know, here you have this brittle bone and not only are you walking, but you're jumping and, and you, you know, kind of stressing yourself. It was my doctor who I had, who had been my, my orthopedic physician kind of throughout my life. Uh, he always encouraged me to do things. He always encouraged me to be more physical, but I really was stopped kind of that whole time because I was mentally afraid. Right. And so I definitely could have experienced it earlier if I would have not have had the blocks that I would have had. But 
I had the blocks. Yeah. Um, there are people that have the same type of OI that I have that, um, you know, didn't go through life the way that I went through it. And so they maybe didn't even uh, care about the OI and they just kind of stayed physical and were able to just kind of be healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, but for myself and my story, it really was uh, a conquest of the mind. It was really right. getting through the emotional and the psychological things that were holding me back. So for me, it wasn't necessarily the disability. It was the other side of it, mm -hmm. the mindset. So yeah. yes, I could have done it and I probably should have done it, but my support system, uh, the people around me, my parents, my siblings, my family, friends they would always tell me to be careful they would always be watching out for me always say oh don't do that don't do this so right. it definitely built that up but there is i should have and i probably could have done it earlier but you know my story is that it happened when i was 42. yeah so well, <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I guess it's just one of those things you know be glad it happened when it happened you know that, Absolutely. I mean, that it happened is, is right there you know the the, the wonderful piece. And, right. and that, that's why I was asking that because, you know, in, in hearing your story and, and knowing that mental block, you know, I, I think from people that I've worked with who, you know, are dealing with, you know, some chronic issues and, you know, some of their own types of disabilities, whatever it may be. Um, I, I've always figured that seems to be the biggest block, you know, and, and that's why I was wondering in, in your story, you know, what was it that physical that was really stopping you or it was yourself that was stopping you? Yeah, it was a, it was a little bit of both. I mean, I can say that it was a little bit of both because even through the mental and because I was so unhealthy, because I wasn't doing anything physical and paying attention to that, there was a physical aspect of it because my legs were right. very weak. You know, my, I gained a bunch of weight. I couldn't do things physically that I, that I, wanted to do mm -hmm. uh, and then the other part was the mental side and a really a lot of it was because I was really not taking into consideration my disability like I, I spent years denying my disability and with OI it really is kind of like an invisible disability what people talk about you know there's a lot of those out there a lot of people that have chronic illnesses deal with that aspect of it so, mm -hmm. you know, I dealt with that too. Even, man, even when I was using a wheelchair, people would wonder why I was in a wheelchair uh, because maybe I didn't look as different. Uh, when right. I was on crutches, it was the same thing. They would be like, why are you on the crutches? What's wrong with your foot or your leg? Or, so there was always questions. So then when I started walking, it was the same stuff because here I am trying to be careful and navigate through life and doing things a little differently. Mm -hmm. And people don't see it so they're trying to encourage me or they want me to do something but i'm scared so i'm holding back and just it, it was a lot to deal with so i was i literally was like okay you know i'm not disabled i don't have a disability like i would just tell myself you know what I, mm -hmm. i'm just a normal dude and i'm just living my life but i was doing that having to deal with all of the consequences that came with the disability right i, I still had to you know I still broke bones kind of throughout that time. I had a few breaks in my late twenties and my early thirties. So I was still dealing with it. I couldn't just say, mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have a disability. And that was a huge part of the transformation in that kind of period before I really, you know, flipped the switch and started into right. my transformation was uh, embracing it. And I think that's where I've been finding even now, as I'm helping other people, I see them getting stuck there where, they don't want to embrace it. They want to say, well, no, that's this over here. And I'm trying to be over here when in fact you have to put both of those together so mm -hmm. that you can be somewhere else that you don't even know exists. It, it seems like there needs to be this middle ground because, you know, what I'm hearing you saying is, you know, if, if you want to deny that I even have this, which I think on one hand almost makes sense. You know, if we, if we don't dwell on our disability, then therefore we're not going to act in a certain way and, and maybe we'll, you know, move on with life. And, and But then you had that other extreme where your family, well, I would assume trying to be extremely helpful, in a lot of ways was hurting you by holding you back. Right. Although that wasn't their intention, I'm sure. Exactly. Um, exactly. It kind of seems like the, the balancing act of, you know, I, I don't want to, I, I can't deny this 
but then when the people who are not denying it, but actually telling me, well, you have it, therefore be careful. Right. You, you need this middle ground somewhere. Yeah, it was absolutely, because even for them, it was almost a separation as well. And a lot of what they were telling me was focused on what I couldn't do. And I think that was a big portion of it too, because uh, by denying it, I'm saying I can't do these things. And where the switch was for me was when I started focusing on what I could do. Mm. You know, what can I do as opposed to what can't I do? Mm -hmm. And that's a huge thing that I tell people because I, I hear a lot of people and I did it myself where it was just literally talking about what I couldn't do. And then everybody that's like trying to help me would, would focus on that stuff also. Right. So uh, it was a really strange place to be. But as soon as I was able to shift the perspective and say, well, what can I do? Let's start there, even if it's one thing, mm -hmm. and let's just start and do something because then that list grows. Because with this type of disability, it's a whole laundry list of what I can't do. Right. So the can list was very short and, and I really didn't even look at it. But once I started looking at that, that's when that list gets longer and then you don't even see this list over here. So that was very key in the whole thing. And I think that's, again, where people get stuck because they get mm -hmm. stuck on what they can't do. What is, their, what is their disability keeping them from? And that's where they get stuck. And, you know, I, I, that's where I'm trying to help people too, right. is to help them see, well, sure, there's a whole list, but what can you do? Even if it's mm -hmm. one thing right now, let's do that one thing. Right. And, um, and that's where the change really happened for me. And when you say do that one thing or more, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I'm hearing it in that sense of, well, okay, if I have the positive attitude. So, you know, the more I focus on the can'ts, then I have a negative attitude and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the other is true. Um, so I would think in that switch of attitude of the can'ts, it, it's very helpful. But... How do you make that switch? You know, how, how do you go from taking that leap of faith and, and, you know, saying, well, yeah, I think I can do this, even though maybe it's borderline on my can't list, you know, but, but I, I want to challenge myself. I, I want to go beyond this and really prove to myself. Yeah. How do you flip that switch? Well, there's absolutely that obstacle because I went through that a lot, even stepping into the gym because – doing going into the gym and lifting heavy things and pushing heavy things is the exact opposite of what my disability tells me right my disability you. is like don't don't lift anything heavy you're gonna break something so that was absolutely one of those obstacles where it was getting the strength and like you said just kind of taking that leap of faith and i think it takes a lot of self-development self-awareness and it's funny you mention it because it is faith and just having the faith that you can accomplish something. And I think what it is also is equating it to maybe something else in your life. So, you know, when I, when I thought about going to the gym and like really going all out and doing things that I've never thought I could and really pushing myself past limits, it was a lot of, well, where were other times in my life when I did that? That didn't even have to do with like the disability. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, I was scared to like public speak or I was scared to go meet these people or do this job interview, like whatever it was in life. Right. And then I thought, well, gosh, I did those things, right? I was able to get over that fear. So why, let me try that here. Let me try that here. You have to be, right. willing. You have to be willing to give yourself the chance to test your limits. And I think that what, you know, I don't think it's an easy Flip, uh, an easy switch to flip. I think it takes a lot of pieces to the puzzle. And, you know, luckily for me throughout the time kind of leading up to it, I was doing a lot of self-development. I was doing a lot of reading. I was getting more into spirituality. Uh, my wife is uh, leaps ahead of me on the spiritual path. So she was leading me. She's been my biggest support system kind of throughout the whole thing. And she was always telling me, 
and seeing that I could do things and, and mm-hmm. telling me I could do it. So there's a support system. There's building your own support system within yourself. And then like literally you just gotta, you just gotta try it. You just have right. to, you just have to do it and see. And that's the biggest thing, especially when it came to a lot of these physical things for me, because I, I'm, again, I was, I started doing things and I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe I could do that. Like mm-hmm. most simple things too. I, I mean, there was like very simple things that occurred for me that just blew my mind and, and brought tears to my eyes. And it was just moving. And then once those things happened, that whole list of cans started growing. It's like, Oh yeah, I can, I can, I can. Right. And then it was like, Oh, let me test this out. Let me test that out. And it just grew and grew, but I stayed consistent. I really kind of went in and, and, you know, with the consistency, I didn't let go. I didn't let go and I, and I didn't give up and I wanted to, but I knew, you know, there was a whole bunch of, you know, why am I doing this right. behind it, which helped. And I knew why, and I just always referred back to my, why was I doing this? And that helped me. So it's a lot of pieces, but I think that initial, that initial flipping of the switch, it, it, you know, there's a lot of pieces to it, but mm-hmm. you've got to do it. You just have to do it. You have to start. So you have to pick one thing that like might even seem easy for you right now. Just, just pick it and be consistent at it and do it. Right. Cause a lot of people just stop themselves from that. Cause they think, Oh, it's not going to do any good if I eat good today. It's like, well, why don't you eat good today and then do it tomorrow and then mm-hmm. do it the day after and then do it the day after and then do it for the next two weeks. You know, just that one thing. Right. So, yeah, it's, 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 a, big, um, it's a big task, but it can be a little task. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. It's all yeah. little tasks do equal into a very large accomplishment that you can look back and go, whoa, really? I, I just, exactly. Yeah. Um, now, you know, you said you had, you know, support of your wife and, you know, your own support system and what you were gathering. When you were making this transformation, did that, like, freak your family out? I mean, were they, again, out of niceness, but were they trying to say to you, like, hey, don't, like, maybe you shouldn't be doing any of this stuff? Or, or did they jump on board right away? I kind of didn't talk about it too much. Mm. I really went in and just... You know, my wife knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I think I talked to my brother because my brother's always been like muscle bound and working out like, you know, he's always been that guy, but I right. really didn't talk to him about it. And again, it was just over the course of like five to eight months, like five month mark. I really saw changes. Eight months is where it really like hit, but it happened quickly. And I really didn't tell people too much about it. The biggest mm-hmm. person that, uh, and I tell a story about this in my book was my mom who was always the one to tell me to be careful. And she, you know, I love her. She's my mom. She's always looking out for me and she's always been there for me. But her telling me to be careful was what I feel almost got me into this mess. Right. So when I went into my transformation, like I really didn't talk to her and I didn't hear from her and we really didn't talk. And then, you know, when it happened, it just blew her mind. Oh, and, I'm sure. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to save the, the, the true essence of that story for the people to read the book because yes. it's, it's the last chapter in the book and it is something very special. And I really want people to experience it in its full glory. In I so, totally agree. <laughs> but yeah, dealing, dealing with my mom and, and dealing with my parents, uh, just those really close people, my sister I didn't really talk to. Uh, yeah, it was very, I didn't have too many people telling me no because I didn't let them. And I knew that if I, if I let them in, maybe they would have told me no or be careful. Or, and mm-hmm. I didn't want to hear it. I, I was on the other side now. I was like, let's go. It's on. You know, I had, I had tea with me on my, by my side. And she was like, let's go, let's go. So, yeah, it was just kind of head down, start doing the work and, and go full out. Right. And, and that's why I'd ask that because, you know, when you, uh, you know, share about that, you know, with, uh, and again, I mean, the family cared, I mean, no doubt on there, Absolutely. but, you know, thinking about, you know, people listening and watching this, you know, podcast to, you know, think to themselves, well, sure, I, w- I want to do some of this, but I'm, I'm, you know, always hearing the negative, you know, because people don't want something to go wrong with whatever their condition may be. Yeah. Um, 
you know, so kind of knowing, you know, how, how you get over that so that they can, you know, kind of push forward and, and not hear all that negative if, if they're trying to do something positive. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, again, I talk about it in the book, I talk about supporting characters and I talk about building your team. And I think that's very important to look at your surroundings, mm -hmm. look at the people around you and really examine how they're talking to you and how you may be allowing them to kind of run your, uh, guide you and, and guide your path and really see like where you need to make a change. And a lot of people get weirded out by this because I tell them, look, you know, your friends are going to change. You may not talk to some of the most important people in your life right now because they're not telling you the right things. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of the process. Trust me, on the other side, they're going to come back and they're, you're going to be even better for them, which is even a crazier idea <laughs> that people mm -hmm. get, that I'm trying to get across people. It's like, no, you have to understand once you go through this and then you're able to show them on the other side, they're going to be improved. Your relationship will be improved. Everything gets improved when you can stop that negative talk and anybody trying to like maybe hold you back. Uh, once you can let that go and just make that shift and you know, maybe it's temporary, maybe it's going to last. Most of the time it's temporary. I can tell you that much because when you come out on the other side and you are a healthier person, and you are feeling your best 150%, it's transformative for every single person in your life. So it really does start with that team, with that support system around you, and getting rid of that negativity, blocking out that negativity, and finding ways to find people that can give you the positive. Right. And because it's tough to do it alone, it's really yeah. tough to do it alone, uh, especially like going through life with a disability, you're used to getting help. You're used to, and in a totally different way, right. right? So it's all this help because you need this help. But then as soon as you shift to, well, I want this help to get healthier, it totally changes the relationship with people. So people mm -hmm. start to come out of the woodworks that like want to help you in a positive way. And then your team builds and then you're building and then you're transforming. Right. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it sounds so easy, but I, I know it's not. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the great thing about it sounding that way is that maybe then people can hear it and say, hey, that's doable. You know, yeah. I, I can do that. You know, I, I can take these steps and, and I can build that team and I can do this and show people. Yeah. Um, well, what would you say was, was like the big thing that helped you to make this shift? You know, I know you said you didn't want to die young and, you know, the doctor was already saying, hey, I got problem. You know, you, you have some medical issues. But I can imagine some people just sitting back going, well, I got this disease to begin with. I got this disability. Yeah, and I'm also, you know, sick. Well, you know, sucks for me. Yeah. And just kind of go with it. I mean, what, what, what do you think was that key to, to trigger you to say, well, wait a minute. Well, <laughs> you know, well, we're not just lying back here. <laughs> yeah, it was very much again, just embracing the disability, uh, embracing like what I felt, because a lot of people, a lot of people will do is they'll start to blame the disability. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it's true. Like there are certain disorders and, and diseases and disabilities that do affect other things physically. Right. Like we're not saying that, we're not denying that, but when it comes to because I truly believe that even if that's the case, you can still be healthy and you mm -hmm. can still do things to, to be healthier. Mm -hmm. So I think it really takes though, embracing the disability and not blaming the disability mm -hmm. because that right there can flip the switch for people. That is where you go, Oh, it's not the disability that's doing this to me. It's me that's doing this to me. You know, it's like taking responsibility right. for, you know, what has led up to the poor health. For me, it was eating whatever I wanted. For me, it was not doing anything physical. Mm -hmm. So like just those two things alone, once I was like, once I like understood that it had nothing to do with the disability itself, then I saw, okay, it's just because I've been eating crappy. Uh, it's just because I've been right. sitting on my butt all day. And then I was able to go, okay, 
let me embrace my disability. What can I do with my disability? Even though it exists, I know I have to combat these two things. So what can I do? Again, going back to that list of, right. because most, most of the time I would have been, and I did do it a couple times throughout my life where it was like, well, I can't go to the gym. Uh, I can't exercise, you know? And then with that, that just, then the poor, poor eating just mm -hmm. happens. And you, you know, it's cause it's all the puzzle piece. You have to have all those things in alignment to be healthy. So when it came down to it and it was time to flip that switch and it was time to really, you know, get into it, I had to say, you know, what can I do? And it, and it really took embracing the disability, learning about it, uh, fighting it, going after it, mm -hmm. and really just having that, you know, awareness, that really strong self-awareness of what's really going on in my life right now. Right. So, yeah, it was definitely beyond just, I don't want to die. It was, you know, there's a lot I need to deal with here. So let me get into it. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah. and it took a lot. It was a lot, you know, I always tell people like through the whole thing and it, the physical part was like the last on the totem pole. It was really the mental, emotional, and mm -hmm. then physical. So, yeah. And, and I would tend to think for, you know, a lot of people, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. You know, and, and I like how you're saying that it's, it's not the blaming of the disability for, you know, all the things that you can't do, but it, it's embracing kind of the, the disability is a part of me, so it's all me. So if, if I just kind of accept who I am, where I am, now let me move forward. Right. You know, in, instead of the, you know, woe is me, you know, look, look what I have. No, look who I am. Right, right, exactly. From there. Yeah, taking it all because there were times when throughout my life where I tried to maybe work out but because I was denying my disability and kind of just like pushing it aside, I would do things in the gym that made absolutely no sense. And I would end up hurting myself. Mm -hmm. So I was going into it with, oh, I'm not disabled. I'm not disabled. It's fine. I can, I can bench press this, you know, and then, oops, my shoulder breaks. I mean, like stupid stuff that I didn't realize that, you know, once I did it for real and embrace the disability, then I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I can bench press, but I'm going to do it differently. And I'm going to mm -hmm. push lighter weights and I'm going to, you know, so there's all, all these other things that come into play when you actually embrace it and say, yeah, it is part of me. How do I deal with it? Right. Or how do I really, you know, do things differently with it than I have been? Mm -hmm. Which, and, and I'm going to, your story is just inspiring, to be honest, because you. You know, when I, I, you know, have read about it and, and looked over, you know, your website and all that. I mean, because at so many different points, I could see where you could have just blamed that disability and said, hey, you know, even in faith, hey, you know, well, God gave me this. So, mm -hmm. oh, well, you know, but I mean, yeah. you went above that. And uh, I, I think in, in what you're saying, is, is that part of the reason for the title of your book? Because I was also caught by the title. You know, the yeah. disabling your disability really said something to me because it, 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 one of those titles where I had to look at that and it was one of those, yeah, okay, whatever. And then you had to go back and go, wait a minute, what, what is this really saying? I, <laughs> you know, and, and I like that because I had to think, think this through and go, wait, wait, wait a minute, he, he's saying something here. Yeah. <laughs> I, even in the title itself. Yeah, I really, you know, when I started, when I came out of the transformation and I knew that I wanted to share what I was going through with other people, it started with disable my disability because I had told my trainer that one day. He said, oh, what, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, man, I'm disabling my disability. And he was like, oh, that's awesome. I'm like, I'm going to use that. So I'm like, I just started <laughs> saying it. I just started telling people, yeah, man, I'm disabling my disability. And so it started kind of on that mission and that was the website and everything. And then when it came time to finish the book and put the book out. And when I started coaching other people and helping other people, mm -hmm. then it was about them. It wasn't about me. So it right. had to change to disable your disability. Like this is how you do it. It's because it's not about me anymore. Mm -hmm. Like my story is my story, but this is about you now. And how can you disable your disability and live the healthy life you deserve? And yeah, it's really, you know, the title has definitely gotten, gotten both responses because I get some response from the the community of people that have disabilities and um, there's this thing called ableism 
Mm-hmm. And it, you know, and that's it, it's a big thing, and I totally understand. And people yep. think that's what I'm talking about in this book. They say, "Oh, well, I'm not going to get rid of my disability." Blah blah blah. And I'm like, "Well, no, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, right. if I'm talking about embracing it, not erasing it." And uh, so the title is a little controversial at times, which is great because I want people to see it and think mm-hmm. and be like, "Oh, what's what's that about?" You know. And um, so, yeah, and, and then with the, with the pictures that I put on the cover of the book, too, it was a little, you know, it can be like, oh, there's this dude, and he's in a wheelchair, and he's out of a wheelchair. So, you know, just, I, I just wanted to create the questions, and I think that's what I wanted to do with the book What also was just to create questions to, you know, give some ideas and concepts and, and things that I've thought of and ideas, things that I've been through. And then just really raise the question. I mean, this is just the first of many books because this discussion is going to continue. So Mm -hmm. we're going to have to see where it goes because I want people to get into it and try the things that I'm talking about. And then maybe it's different for somebody or maybe this needs to be tweaked. But uh, yeah, disable your disability. I really wanted it to be for the people, for, uh, you know, for that community. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things, you know, when, when I came back to the title and, you know, I had to really kind of study it for a moment and go like, well, wait a minute, it's not, <laughs> you know, just a title, it, it's saying something. Yeah. I, that's what I kind of got out of the disabling piece was, was that you weren't saying get rid of or ignore your disability, but it, it was that disabling, which really did say to me, I'm acknowledging it. You know, right. so it, it's it's there, but I'm going to disable what's there, but I'm acknowledging that it exists. And, and that was one of the things that really caught my attention that, wait a minute, we're, we're, we're not talking about get rid of it or ignore it, which, you know, I, I've known a lot of people who go that path. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. well, let's not act like I have a disability, uh, like what you were saying. Um, yeah. But that wasn't your title at all. I'm so glad that you got that. And I, and I think that's important because it really is just flipping the disability on its head, just saying, you know, we're going to, we're going to take control of the disability, you know, disability, having a disability is something that stops you. We're going to stop that thing from stopping you and we and then we're not going to stop. So, it's right. like, you know, yeah, we're just flipping it 180 and we're, you know, stopping it. And now we're just going to move ahead. Yeah, and absolutely. It's not about erasing it. It's not about getting rid of it. It's about embracing it and really understanding it for yourself, understanding yourself in a deeper sense. And, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of it for me was also spiritual. And um, I don't talk about that in the book. In fact, I had a whole section in the book that I took out that mm-hmm. talked about that. And that's for the next one. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, I just felt that it didn't, it didn't, it didn't need to go into this book because this was very clear. We're talking about mindset, eating better and moving. And, um, you know, to get onto that next level, that's going to be something else because there's a whole nother level beyond, you know, when I'm talking about self-awareness and, and really self-development it, you know, that's a whole deeper level Mm -hmm. that I think needs to be talked about and needs to be touched on because that's where, you know, a lot of people can get unstuck. Yeah especially having a disability uh that that's where magic happens Mm -hmm. yeah and and that's what i've been hearing you know throughout your story you know that that is the underlying piece of it but not just something underlying but but kind of the the impetus that that will make this movement you know and and I, I would assume that's what would be the case, you know, for a lot of people. I mean, they, they can get fired up and, and, you know, start working on what you can do. But yeah, if you don't work on th- that personal development piece, then you're, you're missing a key component to who we are, you know, yeah. is, is the way I'd see it. Absolutely. That's, it's the pieces of the puzzle, you know, and you have to make sure that all of the pieces fit correctly Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to mold those pieces. So you have your mindset and you have your eating better and you have your moving and being physical and working out. And then really you have like the spiritual side, this, this soul side where you, that fits too in this puzzle right. and all of that fits together. So you can see the big picture mm-hmm. and whether you want to accept that or not, you will have to think about it at some point in the journey like in this transformation and I see other people that are like working out and eating good 
but something's still missing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can always just tell, I can always tell, okay, it's something personal and all that personal stuff has to do with deeper things in life that are more of a, you know, it's, you know, it's not just like little mental blocks. There's something Mm -hmm. deeper. And, you know, I went through that too, where it was like, you know, through the transformation, there were some major things that occurred that I was like, wow, this is bigger than like anything I ever experienced before. And like, it has so much more to do than me being in this gym right now and Mm -hmm. and lifting these weights. It was like, it was an incredible experience. So I can't wait to talk about that. Because that's a whole other component that I think can be touched on and and, Mm -hmm. and discussed because it would be beneficial for a lot of people to understand that and not be afraid of it, you know? Right. No, I, well, I totally agree. And, and, yeah. and I appreciate that that's something that you're going to spend more detailed time on because I've seen that throughout my career and where I've worked with people suffering from addictions through many other, you know, facets of life and the ones who want to not deal with that piece or think that, you know, the piece of the personal development and spiritual just has nothing to do with them. And it's, you know, kind of fix the surface issue and then I'll be good. Right. They don't succeed, you know, and, and I've never seen that succeed where I've seen the opposite is true. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad that you took that out of this one so you can focus a whole other book on that. Um, because yeah, I, I see that as, as vitally important and, uh, yeah. um, Definitely when that book comes out, I look forward to reading it. We'll definitely have to have you back. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Just do this podcast and then skip a whole essential part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. I'll be back once that one. I've already started working on that one. So, it, uh, you know, we'll see how, how quickly I can turn that one out. But I think it definitely is a big component. And even for me personally, like, you know, my transformation happened, you know, it was like three years ago now, almost three years this summer. And there's been times where, you know, I'm eating good and maybe I'm working out, but I lose connection to like other stuff Mm -hmm. and I get depressed or I have stress or, you know, I'm not, not going to church as much or, you know, not doing things that I know I should be doing. And that's when I start to slip and that's when Mm -hmm. I start to gain some weight back. I've gained probably about 10 pounds back from my initial Right. And, you know, it happens and I can see that it happens because not all of the pieces are there. So again, like, okay, I can eat perfect and I can work out five days a week even. And, but it's still not going to get me the result that I want because Mm -hmm. up here, it's not straight. And in here, it's not straight. Right. And like for me right now, like I know that it's inside here, that's not the straightest. So there's definitely a component where you got to get back in alignment and then those other things will start to come and they actually are easier and then results happen faster. Right. So, you know, again, that's a whole part that I'm going to talk about <laughs> that I'm talking about. And, you know, I, I end up talking about it with like my clients, my current clients right. and people that, that reach out to me. I, I always talk about that. And mm-hmm. you know, in the book, I talk about just knowing your why. And, you know, that's a big thing kind of in the world right now is just know why you're doing something. And I try and touch on that because that's, that's a little bit touching on it, you know, mm-hmm. slightly just talking about that. So mm-hmm. it's really good just to really like think about that. And, you know, people need to not be afraid to question themselves about that. Yeah. I think that's another thing uh, that a lot of people with disabilities, like just dealing with the disability is tough enough. So like, man, I, I don't want to go deeper. Like that's even, yeah, exactly. man, I'm, I'm already deep, you know? So they get hesitant to go even deeper. Yep. So that's where, you know, I'm hoping to help some people with that. Excellent. Yeah. So, so needed. And uh, I'm, I'm really glad that you're, you know, working that piece of it. Um, what would you say to kind of sum things up to, you know, someone who is suffering from, you know, whatever their disability happens to be. And, you know, they're, they're kind of on that cusp of what do I do next? Uh, what, what would you kind of sum this up to be like for them? Hmm. I would say if they're on the cusp of wanting to do something, wanting to make a change, like that's half the battle. So you know you want to do something 
And I dealt with this too, because what happened for me was like, I knew I wanted to make a change. I just didn't know how to do it. Mm. And I had to realize that, you know, there were things that I didn't know I didn't know. Right. So it was very much um, just understanding that and asking for help and kind of going out and trying to find as much re- as many resources as I could and not being afraid of asking for the help. Mm-hmm. Cause when you, when you're ready for that change and, and really listening to the help, like, cause that's another thing. So you ask for help, but if you don't take the help, then <laughs> you're not helping yourself. So, but if someone's mm-hmm. on that cusp and they're really like, you know, teeter- teetering on that and they're like, man, I really want to get healthy like that, but I don't know what to do. Like that's when you, come to my website, reach out to me, you know, mm-hmm. get the book, uh, hit me up and like, let's talk about it because you want to ask for help. You want mm-hmm. to be open to that help because that's what's really going to help to pull you and give you the resources that you need and, you know, really give you that foundation to like start the process, to just start. But a lot of people that are, that are on the cusp and they don't know what to do, they just don't want to start. They just like... I don't know what to do. They're lost. Yep. And I think it is just reaching out and looking for help and uh, being mm-hmm. open. To, so it's, so to answer the question, <laughs> I'm going around, to answer the question, look for help, ask for help, and then be willing to accept that help. Right. Yeah. Awesome advice. <laughs> um, so how best can people get a hold of you who, you know, either are looking for that help or just want to know more about you and, and, you know, Definitely, where can we get your book? Well, definitely the book uh, is available on Amazon, both in paperback and Kindle version now. And uh, I'm working on the audio version too. Mm, So that will be coming soon. And so perhaps once someone listens to this or watches this later, the audio version will be available. So let me put that out there. Uh, So go to Amazon, you can get the book there. Or if you'd like to, you can come to my website, disableyourdisability.com. And there's a few different options to be able to buy the book there. You can click through to Amazon or you can get uh, autographed signed copies uh, for people that may be with a business or uh, an event and you want to get bulk copies. You can uh, contact me through there. Anybody else can reach me through the website as well. And you can connect with me on social media. My biggest the place that I'm at the most is on Facebook. So you can find me on Facebook, Disable Your Disability. And also for my personal, it's I am Tony Jacobson. So you can find my, my personal and my Disable Your Disability page there. And I'm on Instagram if you like to look at pictures and videos mm-hmm. uh, at Disable Your Disability. So those are kind of the three ways to get me. But come to the website. I've got some great services. Mm-hmm. I offer online coaching. I'm uh, now starting a new healthy living mentoring program, mm. which is meant for people who aren't ready and are feeling kind of intimidated by a personal training program. Mm-hmm. The, the mentoring program is something different. It's kind of whole life training, uh, coaching and mentoring. So I'm offering that now. I offer coaching calls where we can just get on and just start, start to get you down the road. It's that mm-hmm. piece of asking for help. So uh, come to the website, come to the website and see what's going on. Yep. Excellent. I, I definitely encourage everybody to do that. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, your story is inspiring and there's a lot that you can offer to, to help people to, you know, move with their life. Um, but yeah, the, your website is definitely easy to navigate and, you know, I've been all over it and, and it's great. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I highly encourage people to take part in that, take a look at it, see what they can, uh, you know, get from you and, uh, it's definitely going to be a help for them. So. Yeah, I really hope so. And make sure uh, if anybody does, when people do come to the website, please <clears throat> sign up on the, the VIP list on my email list because I send out newsletters where I'm curating things from around the world and on the internet, a lot of healthy things that pertain to having a disability, limited mobility, and you know, it's food and, and, and exercises and all different sorts of cool things. So get on my email list too. Yep, definitely. Well, Tony, I just want to thank you very much for, you know, taking the time to, uh, you know, talk to, uh, you know, my audience and, you know, everybody who is you know, really struggling. And, uh, you know, I mean, what you're doing is, is great work. Um, I would even call it a ministry. Uh, it, it's just awesome. So uh, really, th- you know, thank you for, uh, for your time. 
Thank you so much, Chris. And, and thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it and, and finding that message in my book. And, and I know that there is something definitely there for your audience members. And uh, yeah, I just really appreciate you for having me on. Thank you. Great. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.